Assalamu alaikum everyone welcome to my youtube channel hope you all are doing well in today's video we will be discussing the types of society their classification and comparison by Herbert Spencer before I start this video I would like to request you all to please subscribe to my channel press the bell icon and do not forget to like this video so basically Spencer's clear conception of the nature of society helped him develop models to classify and compare societies. Two models which he followed could be identified from his analysis of the classification of societies on the basis of the degree of composition. Spencer's evolutionary law suggested that uh, societies could be classified on the basis of their degree of composition. On this basis, he classified societies into four types. The first one is simple society. The second one is compound society. Third doubly compound society and the fourth is trebly compound society there is another classification based on the method of constructing models or types of models so basically spencer also classified societies into military society and industrial society on the basis of the relative preponderance of one or the other of the regulating sustaining and distributive system Spencer thought of constructing two extremely dissimilar types or models to classify societies into two categories. He called the types as militant societies and industrial societies. The first was a type in which the regulating system was dominant over all the other aspects of society. The second one was in which the sustaining system was emphasized and all the other aspects of society were subordinated to its service. Spencer developed the construction of two polar types mainly for the sake of a clear understanding of societies which possessed a relative preponderance of one or other of the two systems. Spencer described his two types of society as the militant society. Uh, military society is any form of society in which the military exerts a dominant or pervasive role. Its main characteristics may be noted. The first one is that organization for, for offensive and defensive military action. The militant society is a type in which organization for offensive and defensive military action is predominant. It is the society in which the army is the nation mobilized and the whole nation is regarded as a silent army. Here, the entire structure of society is molded into military structure. It reflects a military organization. The second characteristic of a militant society, according to Spencer, is a centralized pattern of authority and social control. Here, the military head is also the political head. He has a despotic control over life and property of all his subjects. Absolute control of the ruler makes necessary a clear, precise and rigid hierarchy of power throughout society. The officials at each level are completely subservient to that above. Spencer wrote, all are slaves to those above. Spencer wrote, all are slaves to those above and despots to those below. The third characteristic of a militant society is rigid social classes. This rigid hierarchy of power necessarily involves a rigid grading of social statuses. Hence, it gives rise to rigid social classes in economic life. The distribution of property and the distribution of material rewards in society are meticulously linked with the order of social ranks. The fourth characteristic of a militant society are the religious beliefs and doctrines relating to the hierarchical power of gods. This authoritarian and hierarchical nature of the society is also reflected in the prevailing system of ideas and beliefs. There exists a set of doctrines, myths and rituals which portray a supernatural uh, authority and government. The gods are also pictured in terms of hierarchy of power. The religion itself is a hierarchical organization and the ecclesiastical head himself possesses supreme despotic authority. In such a society, the despotic head is at the same time not only the military and political head, but also the ecclesiastical one. His central power over government, army and all civil and economic affairs is sanctified and given justification by religion. Here, these societies are normally in antagonism with other societies. Thus, Spencer said, ever in antagonism with other societies, the life is a life of enmity and the religion is a religion of enmity. So let's discuss the fifth characteristic of a militant society. The whole tenor of life in a military society is characterized by rigorous discipline. Life is subject to rigorous discipline. Virtually, there is no difference between the public life and the private life. No element of the private life of the citizen is closed to the state. 
the state can invade and interfere in the private lives of citizens whenever it is felt necessary or desirable to do so. There is the lack of individual rights in the relationship between individual and the state. Thus, the prevailing belief is that its members exist for the benefit of the whole and not the whole for the benefit of its members. The loyalty of the individual to the state has to be unquestioning. The sixth characteristic of a militant society is that human relationship is based on compulsory cooperation. Human relationships are characterized in this kind of society by a state of compulsory cooperation. Spencer, however, has not elaborated this point much. It is clear from the above description that Spencer's militant type of society could be used as a basis of interpretation not only to the despotic societies of the ancient world, but also to the totalitarian societies in the contemporary world. As Ronald Fletcher says that, um, as a type, the militant society could be seen to be of wide use for the purpose of comparative societies. It is relevant to the societies of both the past and the present. So as we have seen that uh, Spencer described his two types of societies as the first is the military society whose characteristics we have just discussed and the second type of society according to Spencer is the industrial society. Let's look at its characteristics. The concept of industrial society refers to that form of society or any particular society in which industrialization and modernization have occurred. The general term industrial society originates from St. Simon, who chose it to reflect the emerging central role of manufacturing industry in 18th century Europe, in contrast with the previous pre-industrial society and agrarian society. Spencer's industrial society is one in which military activity and organization exists, but it is carried on at a distance. It takes place in the periphery of the society and the greater part of the social organization is peaceful. It concentrates upon the increase and improvement of all aspects of human production and welfare upon economic and civil activities. The characteristics of industrial society in this way contrast strongly with those of the militant type. Uh, the first characteristic of uh, an industrial society is the recognition of personal rights. In the industrial society, the members hold personal rights as citizens of the community. There is also an active concern on the part of the members for the maintenance of these rights. The second characteristic is sustaining system possessing a large degree of freedom. In this society, the sustaining system possesses a large degree of freedom from the regulatory system. Here, the control and governance of the economic affairs is deliberately separated from the political government. The third characteristic of an industrial society is the opportunity for the growth of uh, free associations and institutions. The growth of agriculture, commerce, and industrial manufacture within a fixed geographic territory is given military security. The peaceful atmosphere leads to the growth of free associations and institutions. The fourth characteristic is a less rigid class structure. These factors bring about a much less rigid and less tyrannical class structure. In this type of class structure, human relationships become contractual and free. The fifth characteristic of an industrial society is that less religious hierarchy and importance is present. Individual faith and sectarian discrimination enters into religion. Religion, instead of working as a means of social control, remains only as a matter of individual faith and commitment. Religious institutions and practices become more and more secular in nature. The sixth characteristic of an industrial state is individualism. The doctrine that uh, the members of the society exist for the good of the state slowly disappearing. The idea that the will and the well-being of the individual citizens, which is of supreme importance in the society, prevails upon the previous one, hence all forms of governmental control exist merely to manifest their wishes and to serve them. The seventh characteristic of an industrial society is the awareness of the duty to resist irresponsible government. In such a society, the despotic government is considered to be irrelevant and wrong. It becomes a positive duty on the part of the citizens to resist the irresponsible government. The eighth and final characteristic of an industrial society is the dominance of free and contractual type of human relations.
It is clear from the above explanation that the human relationships in the industrial society are therefore wholly different from those in the militant society. Free, responsible, contractual relationships between individuals require voluntary cooperation, not the compulsory cooperation which characterizes relationships in the militant type. So this was all about the classification and categorization of the types of societies on the base of militant society and uh, industrial society which is done by Herbert Spencer. If you like this video please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon beside so you can get the updates of the future videos as well. Thank you so much for listening. Allah